about a week before we were going to shoot, uh, I heard that uh, Marlon, Marlon didn't like the, the uh, taxi cab scene. And I got kind of upset as what is doing. I said, Geez, how can he? Everybody else likes that scene. Gadget, yeah, Kazan likes it, and Spiegel likes it. What's wrong with it? I said, I don't know, he just doesn't want to do it. He, at the lunch break, let's go down uh, in the kitchen. The kitchen on the top floor of the tenement that was shooting on the roof. We'll go down in the kitchen at lunch and finally have this out. So now the three of us, Kazan, Brandon, and I, I'm in this little kitchen, and because Nan said, Mullen, what is it? What is it about the scene that's bothering you? And and because Nan says, you know, we all like the scene, we admire the scene. Brandon says, look, look, Edge. Uh, I've got all I've got all the stuff to say about. It. I could have been a contender and all this stuff I, I have to say. And how can I say that if Ron is holding a gun at me? I, I just I just couldn't say all that. And Kazan said, well, uh, what if you reach out and just put the gun down and then go on? And Brando said, oh, that'll be fine. <laughs> I swear to God, it, it was just like that. It, it, we went. At class, I could have been a contender. I could have been somebody. Well, she's never been in a movie before. And uh, on the op op opening day, and she was so scared that she, she was actually shaking. It was just shaking. And I must say, Brenda was, was awfully nice to her. He took her aside and sort of cooled her, settled her down and encouraged her. And of course, she went on the, and the rest we know. She, she was uh, remarkable. Because then asked me if I had seen Marty. And I said, yeah. And he said, well, I was very uh, impressed with Rod Steiger. And then, and then he asked me to he asked me to talk to him also, all of the casting, which inspired, really inspired uh, Kazan. Active studio casting, almost everybody, even the tiny bit parts, the th one line or two lines, almost all of them came out of the actress uh, studio. But uh, Kazan was unique in, in allowing me to participate uh, uh, in the casting as well. So I, I talked to Rod and and he read a scene from the, and I thought it was very good, and I told Kazan that, and, and that's how we did it. Well, Greg, I think that there was some fear, uh, some fear of the mob. The Leoma, Leoma, the other three fought Joe Lewis. Uh, uh, Omar fought um, Floyd Patterson for the title. He came a tiny bit later. It really was. Yes, it was. Um, I talked to Guzan about it, and I said, guys, the, the goons down here really don't, don't fool. And, and if we have real long showmen as, as, as the extras, all, all the people in the film with the actual long showmen, and then you bring in a, a bunch of phony Hollywood heavies, tough, so-called tough guys in quotes, it's not going to look real. And so... so he said, well, uh, what do you think? And I did suggest we bring in heavyweight uh, fighters. <laughs> and, and so I did. Um, uh, I asked them all to come. Uh, I, this is true. I gave Tony Galento a, a script. And I asked him if, he, if, if he'd read a, a few lines. I handed it to him. He had it really like upside down. He really couldn't, could not read, and he handed it back, and he said, "Well, why don't you, why don't you read the, read it to me?" He said, it. "And um, so, but uh, Tony, even though he's very funny about it, he couldn't remember one line, not one. He changed everyone around, but um, uh, he did a very good job. He was, he was so real. One quick anecdote: Tony Galento had one." He was a beer barrel, he was out of shape, he drank beer all, literally didn't train. But he had one of the hardest left hooks in, in heavyweight history. And 
and every morning he would come on the on the set. It wasn't a set; it was in the streets, River Street, Hoboken. Every morning, and he'd say like, "Hi, you bud," and he'd throw a left hook, just a friendly left hook. It would really hurt. <laughs> and one and one morning, I swear to God, one morning he went over to Kazan's like seven o'clock in the morning. Kazan is working a lot, and he's got a find her, and he's looking like this, setting up the... And Tony Galando says, Hiya, Gadge, how you doing? Bang. And, and knocked Kazan down. <laughs> I, sw I swear to God, he knocked him down. And, and Kazan got up, and he really didn't think it was funny. He chewed him out, he said, God damn it, Tony. He said, you know, we're not playing games there, God damn it, we're working hard. If you want to do that, you can get, get that. Tony went over to the string piece. He was like a little boy hurt. And he walked over to the string piece, and he was staring down at the water. And we were, Charlie McGuire, the assistant director, we were all watching him, just staring at him, almost like in tears. And the, he lifts his head, he's got it. He, he comes back to his hand, he puts his hand out, and he said, OK, Gadge, now you hit me. True. <laughs> Good. It's it, it's a scene toward the end of the movie where Mullen is coming down that gangplank, like toward the little office on the houseboat, and confronting uh, Johnny Friendly, uh, Lee Cobb, and Tony's line was exactly this. Here comes the bum now. I'll top him off lovely. That was the line. And, and we start. And Tony said, oh, OK, action. And Tony looks at him and he says, here comes the lovely bum. <laughs> and because Anne said, no, no, stop, cut. That's not the line, Tony. Don't you remember the line? Because then repeats the line. He says, oh, yeah, stop, sorry, sorry. And he goes again. Start again, and he says, "Here comes the, here comes the bum, all, uh, all lovely, top bum." So he gets it all screwed up again. We went on for about sixteen takes, and he could not get those eight words right. <laughs> and it got so bad that, and it got to be such a private joke. It was sort of cruel in a way, but because then said, "That's just." We don't want to waste any more film. Let's just run it without film, and I'll say action, and just see how many times, <laughs> how many times Tony can take those eight words and change the how many mathematical possibilities are there? <laughs> True. Just before the film uh, opened, uh, I wrote a piece for the New York Times describing pretty much what uh, some of what I've been telling you about are, are troubles being turned down. I mentioned what Zanuck had done and said. And uh, after, after we got nominated for the Oscars, Zanuck sent us an angry telegram saying uh, he read that he was very hurt by the piece I'd written in the Times. And he wondered how I could possibly, how we could possibly say that after, after all the help he had given us. That's, that's true. I, it, we, we handed that wire to each other and said, it's madness out there. So, but that's true. Thank you. Very much. Thank you.